Hi everyone, Lucas here. Just wanted to let you know that we had some audio issues on this upcoming episode. Uh, so just bear in mind if I sound a little bit like I'm being played on a telephone into a microphone into your headphones or computer, whatever you're listening on. So uh, please bear with us. Uh, we're still getting used to making podcasts and we're going to figure this out very, very soon. So sit back and enjoy episode three of Two Nosy Meerkats. Meerkats! Two nosy! Take two! Before this, we were talking about um, how we were as students back in the day because we peaked. Yes. <laughs> and are, are now living shells of our former lives. Yeah, but we still have baby faces, so we can, we can sneak our way into in the younger crews, I feel. Blended. Oh, for sure. Well, I was saying yeah. last episode that you totally have, like, the um, the Disney little brother energy. Disney little brother energy, yeah, I feel like that. Like, I definitely feel that. The kid who's, like, friends with the girl tomboy who they end up, like, going on a cute little date where he, like, softens her in the end. You know the type. <laughs> <laughs> Thing is, like, I didn't watch that much Disney Channel as a kid. I was much more, like, a Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon kid. Oh, and so yeah. that was like a whole culture of like what people watched as kids that I just I wasn't exposed to that much. What about like Courage the Cowardly Dog? Was that your Cartoon Network? Oh, that was huge. Yeah, oh, that was oh. good shit. Yeah, that was really really incredible. Courage, courage. That was. There weren't many shows that were actually properly spooky. And that show was properly spooky. It was very spooky. Yeah, I could like, I feel like my parents would come in the room and be like, they'd like want me to turn it off. And I'd be like, no, yeah. it just, it was just because it scared the shit out of them. Oh yeah. No, my parents hated all the cartoons that I was into. Absolutely hated them. Really? Oh what yeah. What they like? I feel like parents like some kids shows like SpongeBob. Parents love SpongeBob. Not my parents. My parents, they they hated like, any high-pitched voices they were very sensitive to like they also oh. hated pokemon like those super extreme and very high especially the girls voices in pokemon were just super high pitched and like ah they just they hated that so much they hated family guy too in south park they thought it was just not vulgar just like they didn't think it was smart or interesting stuff. yeah we didn't see eye to eye on a lot of cartoons my uh, so no, wait, what is your what did your parents like that you were also into as a kid? What did my parents like that I was into? Uh, they liked SpongeBob. Um, yeah, they liked. Um, I'm trying to think. Maybe Powerpuff Girls. My mom might have liked that. Um, but for the most part, I feel like they just weren't really clued into it. I feel like I was more tuned into yeah. the shows they were watching because. And they wouldn't let me watch, like, Sex in the City. Like, they wouldn't let me watch Sex in the City, which, in retrospect, they let me watch Survivor, which probably has just as much sex <laughs> on it as Sex in the City, if not more. I've never seen Survivor, so... <laughs> you gotta get on it. We gotta have the Las Culturistas guys. Yeah. <laughs> get teach oh, up yeah. or something. The thing is, like, I remember my parents showed me a lot of stuff that they fr maybe shouldn't have. Like, I saw Love Actually when it came out when I was eight years old. And you have, like, those sex stunt doubles. Do you remember? You've seen Love Actually, right? I've seen Love Actually, but it's one of those movies. I see it and I forget more and more of it each time I see it. <laughs> yeah. Like my brain retains less of it the more I watch it. Yeah. Well, in the movie, there's, like, a couple of body doubles. And, um, and they, like, simulate sex. In term, and for like, it's for like movie stars who don't really want to get naked, and so they have body doubles get oh, naked for yeah. them, and then they substitute like they can't really. So they... <laughs> um, would you ever do that? Be a body double as of like a job? Of course, I would. I don't think yeah. I have the body for it. But <laughs> it reminds it, me. It all depends on whose body you're doubling. There might be a body who's like very similar to yours. And That's true. That's true. Exactly. Reminds me of, um, I was thinking about this on the train the other day. I don't know why. I think possibly because it's so haunting. But mm -hmm. uh, in high school, there's this guy, Ghent, who was like Albanian, I guess. I don't know. Okay. It's a weird name. But he was like 
you know, egging on this one girl. He was like, mm-hmm. oh, like, would you make out with a girl in front of me for $500? And she was like, yeah, Whoa. sure, it's $500. And then I, by curious, at 14, was like, I'd make out with a girl mm-hmm. for five hundred dollars. <laughs> and she I was see like, you. I see you in the. He was like, experience. but nobody asked you. Like nobody wanted. Oh no! Nobody was. No one wants to see you do that. And it just hit me in that moment. Obviously, it was a really mean thing to say. But until that moment, it hadn't hit me that like he wasn't just offering her money to like kiss another girl. It would have been like for his pleasure. I thought maybe he was just being like. Oh, well, would you do this? Like, if in, in theory, if you wanted to, like, how much would it take for you to do that? I, I didn't catch on to the fact that he was being gross, you know what I mean? And that was the moment you decided that all men need to perish. That was the moment you were like, all right, this gender's had its time. Time to, oh, time yeah. to end it all. Oh, yeah. Well, what do you think? <laughs> I mean, I'm not a personal fan of Gent from from your description he does this wait how old was he and how wait it was he like a s- student at the same time you he were was student? he wasn't like a teacher could you imagine yeah he was the principal no yeah he he was like my age he was like 14 okay. well. we're all just 14 being dickheads it makes okay, okay it okay. makes sense and i'm sure he's a perfectly lovely gent the thing uh, is like i i know like people i went to high school with that did pretty much not like offering money but also trying to finagle that in in, like a game of truth or dare to like see make people like kiss each other or to like see someone's boobs or something like that that definitely happened i had to make out with my friend sean because i didn't have a dollar and um my friend tobin was like oh well if you guys make out i'll give you a dollar and you can buy the sprite you want and when i say had to i obviously mean that very loosely i didn't have to do anything Mm -hmm. it was like in yeah 10th grade or whatever I just kind of really you know when you have a particular craving you just want a sprite yeah it just happened and I'm like all right well if I have to make out with my friend Sean who's also gay for like five seconds and we can just get a (laughs) sprite together like what the fuck is the harm I don't know why Tobin wanted to see it so badly I don't know Love Maybe. that I'm using real names. Everyone else use fake names. I am using real names. Everyone else, please. <laughs> oh yeah, no, yeah. If you are if you are a listener and you have something a uh, story to submit, please go to our Instagram, go to our link tree, and you will find a Google form through which you can send a story, uh, uh, a little bit of gossip, a, a habit, a neurosis, a fear, an interest, a sexual awakening, or whatever you like. Uh, please do not be disparaging to anyone. Please do not out anyone about any crucial details they would not like. Uh, that being said, please submit anything you like to us. And we are going to do our best to not do this, to not do that exact thing. To not do um, the exact thing I just did. That's what we're going to make. I think sure. if you just don't, yeah, just, yeah. You don't say their last name. Say their last name. No, no, no. Don't say their last name. But, um, um, I was going to ask you something, Lucas, because something else you said reminded me of it. Oh, yeah. Which is, Go on. Um, when you said, I forget what it was you said just now that reminded me of this, but the mm-hmm. w- weirdest porn I've ever seen, and as <gasps> we've spoken about it, I'm not- I already, I already know mine. I want to hear yours. Um, yes. To go first, the weirdest one I've ever seen, as we've spoken about, I'm not a big watcher of porn, and it's like the kind right. of thing like I wish I was lying about, but unfortunately, it just doesn't do mm-hmm. it for me. But my friend- You did- still have time to get into it, if you interested. I, Develop your tastes, your interest, and go explore. I have a girlfriend now. It's porn right in front of me. <laughs> so like, it's porn in real Watch life. Watch it together. Oh, uh, you know, I didn't think of that. I just don't find it very sensual. Like, they're just kind of, okay. uh, for the two girls ones, like, their nails are always super long, which totally, um, sus- like, there's no suspension of disbelief, you know? I can't believe that these two women are actually fucking each other. That is... That I find genuinely surprising because I remember um, there was a friend of mine in high school who's lesbian, whose name I will not mention, but she, I remember she just cornered me one day and she was like, Lucas, when you're in a relationship, keep your fingernails trimmed. And she just, and then she just bolted. That was all she, she just bolted right. She came right to me and she was like, keep your, keep your fingernails trimmed. And then just went away. That was her mission. She just needed 
She just needed me to have that information. It's so like I find rule that number surprising. one. It's rule yeah. number one. It's like the thing that like when you're single and dating as like a woman loving woman or like a non-binary person who loves mm-hmm. women, like you look yeah. for like like people's fingernails and if they're too long, you're like, oh, they're probably straight. Because even if someone's like, you know, a bottom or whatever and just has long fingernails, like people might still cut their fingernails so that other people around them know that they're into women. But with porn, it's just like, they just don't care about that. Kind of like <laughs> earrings or a handkerchief in one uh, butt pocket. It's just, it's a little, it's, a, it's that secret lingo. <laughs> or a carabiner. <laughs> or a con- U-Haul coupon code in the back pocket. confidence. <laughs> <laughs> but the weirdest okay. porn I've ever seen was, um, yes. it was Pokemon themed. And, um, oh it was uh, Pikachu, whose name was obviously Dikachu, and then Misty, whose name was Fisty. <laughs> Dikachu. And then Brock was simply named Cock. It's, they just did too <laughs> much <laughs> with him. And wow. By the way, I know people who are in Pokemon. I know voice actors in Pokemon, so I need to tell them about this. I thought you meant like in Pokemon porn. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I. No, I. That would be interesting. It. Those are people I want to talk to, people who do the voices for Pokemon porn. That would be good. We should try and get like a, like one of those um, like sex workers who specializes in like TV and movies kind of parodies, like the Pirates mm. of the Caribbean porn. Like I want to hear. That would be fascinating. What goes, I seriously want to hear what goes on behind the scenes. I want to. Anyway, so go on. Okay, so it's Pokemon Park. says so Dikachu, there's Cock, and Dikachu, then Misty. Cock and Fisty. And Misty. when Dikachu is fingering Fisty, you can kind of, it's so visceral, you can kind of see, like, the yellow paint from her hands, because Pikachu's a lady, even though her name's Dikachu, um, like, slowly fade away. And as Dikachu comes... She yells, mm-hmm. Dika! 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 <gasps> oh, 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 oh. Now I want to hear yours. <laughs> okay. The weirdest one I've ever seen. It might not be the, but it's, it, I, I think it was the funniest one I've ever, ever seen. It was a gangbang. It was a woman getting fucked by three dudes who are all dressed up as pterodactyls. Oh my God. And, like, their body is completely covered, like, pterodactyl heads, like, full-ass wings, and the, it's just a hole cut out for their cock and balls as they're... And so, like, one dude is, like, lying back, and she's uh, sitting on top of him, and hit, that dig is in her butt, and then there's someone standing in front of her, uh, fucking her in her vagina, and then she has one in her mouth, and... But then, no, that wasn't the funny bit. The funny bit is that there is... Just a pterodactyl pie on someone's hand, just yamming away at the camera. Just ah! <laughs> and, this, and this one is not doing anything sexual. It's just, it's just a bit of flair, just yamming away at the camera. Just, just a little away. tiny pterodactyl puppet. <laughs> do, just, you like, ah! do you like that? <laughs> Does that feel nice to you? You like that, bitch? <laughs> I would hope it was saying like really nice things. Like, are we finding the G spot okay? <laughs> Have we found the clit? Are you getting stimulated in a way you like? We care about your preferences. No. We hope you come too, you know? We're not selfish. We've only been around for 3,000 years. That's a lot of women. I love you said thousand instead of millions. Oh, I mean, same shit. I don't know. What do I do? I'm not going to be around for thousands. I'm not going to be around for millions. I see the world through my lens. So by that extension, that's just the same. The thousand years in the middle. That's okay. That's true. uh, I remember I did once clip. uh, This was, this honestly made me sad. But I did, like, I was a big fan of Teen Titans. That was one of my favorite cartoons growing up. And I I was just like saw one it was like a Teen Titans porn I was just like oh god I don't want this to exist but I I need to check it out see just what it is and like the moment I saw Cyborg's penis I was like I'm out no I can't do this you you can't have a penis your body is a robot I don't 
I don't want you to have a penis. I just, I don't like it. Um, yeah, that was, yeah, they do. There's a lot. I feel like there's a lot of porn about Elastigirl from The Incredibles. Really? I feel like there's a lot more about that than we realize. It also well, comes up as like, if you're like looking at, it comes up, if you're looking at porn, it comes out as a pop-up, a picture of Elastigirl in some other way that was drawn. But, and it's, it's yeah. I think Elastigirl, well, that makes sense to me because you see her and you're like, she could do a lot with the, like, when she's not saving oh, the yeah. world. Well, also, uh, is elasticity that oh, important yeah, she's, she... for saving the world? It's more important for sex. Yeah. No, that's true. <laughs> and plus, they made her, like, very thick as well. Like, she got that booty. Yeah, and, she like... did. These yeah. Pixar people got dumb asses all around. I know. I remember seeing a whole article just about like why it was important for her to be sexy. And I don't remember any of the content, but I was, cause I was just looking at a picture. I was like, yeah, she is like that. My mind just went numb. I was just Did like, you write yeah. that article? Is that what you're trying to imply? What I'm saying is I have an alias. I write articles about sexy cartoon characters. You can find it at, um, Lucas Arnold sex characters <laughs> at Gmail at hotmail. 69 AOL compuserve.com <laughs> ask Jeeves <laughs> you can ask Jeeves if that character is sexy yeah. Jeeves what did Jeeves look like again was he sexy he I don't know I I'm trying I'm thinking of like do you mean like from like the books and like TV or do you mean just the icon on ask Jeeves I mean literally the icon on ask Jeeves I'm looking here. I'm Googling him right now. Yeah, Google him. I want to... Because I, I was a big fan of, like, Jeeves and Worcester. You know, Stephen Fry and Hugh Laurie, they did a series about all the books. Um, and I thought he... And, yeah, Stephen Fry looks good. Is that... I wouldn't say, like, super sexy, though. Like, it wasn't, like, trying to be attractive. Well, okay, now I'm looking at him, and... Hmm. Okay, I'm so... I'm looking at him, and I'm trying to guess if he looked... What do you think? How does he look? I think Stephen Fry is hot most of the time for whatever yeah. reason. But Jeeves from Ask Jeeves is not hot. I can't even believe I thought once upon a time that he might be. That is interesting. Because when I look at Ask Jeeves, I see so much of Stephen Fry. I mean, he's not bald. And this Ask Jeeves, Jeeves is bald. But I see so much similarity. It's like how we can't see Edward Cullen without thinking of Rob Pattinson. true weirdly though when i think of harry potter i don't automatically think of daniel radcliffe i think of the illustrations from the book oh interesting so i, I don't think they're like synonymous in my mind yeah that's okay yeah. i just never i but i understand what you're saying like people yeah sometimes people who are super fans think of like they wouldn't think of i actually don't always think of robert pattinson when i think of edward cullen i think of the edward cullen i imagined when i read the books at age 13 wait what is the edward cullen you imagined what was so hot so yeah. sexy so steamy sexy how what well, give me some features he give me qualities so stephanie meyer always used to describe him as having topaz eyes that were like melted topaz um which in reality, in terms of like the laws of physics, mm. probably just means it was like really like not golden. Probably that it was like black or I don't know. But um, in in your mind as a thirteen year old, you're like he just has the most beautiful eyes ever. And uh, what was the other one she said about him? There was some kind of crazy modifier. Someone can say in the comments because I'm sure there's Twilight fans who are listening. But. Mm -hmm. um, it, the way half of the Twilight books were just physical descriptions of Edward, which I think is what people don't yeah. necessarily understand about Edward Cullen as a sex icon. Gotcha. Um, was that he was supposed to, he was written as the hottest possible person you could be. And Bella was written as a stand in for every woman of her age, 15, 16. Right. Just like insert woman here, observe Edward Cullen. 
that was basically just like what Tyler was. You know what, what Harry Potter is. Harry Potter is sort of a like insert yourself into this kind of blank person who doesn't know what's happening to him. Yeah, he's very, he doesn't have that many like specific qualities. He's fairly like generic in the, in a, but yeah, yeah, I think I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Daniel Radcliffe. I remember bringing him to life. Oh yeah. Oh, he did. Oh, he did an amazing job. All the actors were great. Um, I did think it quite funny. Like imagine giving birth to a baby boy and then going, I'm going to name this Rupert Grint. (laughs) (laughs) I I was thinking that I was like, that takes, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think I was being kind to my baby if I did that. I think about that a lot in the context of Sterling Knight, who was a Disney star, and his name was literally Sterling Knight. Damn. Like, like, I can't imagine having less autonomy over my own life than being like, the people who raised me have named me Sterling Knight. Yeah, that's too much. That's that's too much. Yeah, it's it, you suit your name very well. You are Gabby Jordan Brat, and it just it's nice. It's concise. Oh, it's free. Thank you. you can do what you want with it. I love it. I think Lucas Arnold suits you as well. It's like Lucas Arnold. You know Lucas Arnold. Lucas Arnold. I was I was a firsty lasty. I was someone you couldn't say just Lucas. You had to say my fault. You had to say Lucas Arnold. Lucas when Arnold. When I was a kid. Right. Yeah, they just always did that. Gabby Jordan Brown has been a process for me because I. Obviously, my name's Gabby Brown. And oh, yeah. When I first started... Do you know how I have you saved in my phone, though? Gabby I, I tried... No, I um, I made it longer. I, um... Is it what Aaron introduces me at, as a... No, 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 no. I, um, I have you as... Uh, I don't know if it can come up. Gabitha Jordanowitz. <laughs> That's what... I just... I wanted to make it longer. <laughs> Bruner. You somehow made my name German. Very anti-Semitic yeah. over here. But yeah. In high school, I was Gabby Brown. And then when I started doing comedy, I was like, I'm going to be Gabby Jordan because the old Gabby Brown didn't do comedy, but Gabby Jordan does comedy. And then I was like, I don't want people actually thinking of my name as Gabby Jordan because it's not really my <laughs> name. So I was like, let me do a little homage to it and be Gabby Jordan Brown which now people have been shortening to Gabby Brown, which goes to show you can yeah. never, you always just are who you truly are. You know, you can never yeah. let go. You never be a new thing. You just, it just is what it is. Oh, it's fine. I, in a sort of similar vein, my, co- anytime I go see my cousins in the UK, inevitably there comes a point where uh, they'll say, you know, you're still five years old in our minds. Like that was, oh. that was the most, that was the time where your personality was the most pungent. That was where you made your mark. Like you, you were five pungent. years old and that, yeah, sort of not like pungent, like a smell, but just like, that was where you were, that's where you stuck in our minds. Mm. Like that's where, it's got, like the first time you smelled cheese or something, like it was like, like that's where they like, that's where I flowered as like a person basically. And that's how they just, that's how they view me. And they always say, anytime I go see them, they say, yeah, you're still five years old in our minds. It's weird to see you not five years old. Interesting. I think I was like, my sister always says I'm like nine years old in her mind and she's six. What? She's younger oh. than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do so is remember? it a three year difference? It's three year difference. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But she's very mature. She's very, she could be 40 and she could be. 80, I don't know. But do you remember the first time you smelled cheese? I think cheese? it's funny. We're, run it up. <laughs> I, I remember the first time I tasted cheese. I remember it was available at my preschool and it was like the kind of like orange pre-sliced. It wasn't, oh. it wasn't even real cheese. And I just tasted it on its own raw and I thought this was awful. And then, but then I had it melted on bread. I was like, oh, this is what it's about. This is what it's like. Right. I wanted to ask though, did you ever like, fight at all with your sister and if so who was the one that was a bit if at all more physical or dominant or anything like that i we never really fought i have a really good relationship with her i consider her one of my best friends but that's awesome i will say she there are ways i like kind of of mice and men lennied her in that I like loved her so much i could be like physically very i would like like once i I, I had this habit of, 
it was an in joke I had with myself when I was like 10, where I would yell like, move it or lose it, sweetie, to just everyone. What? <laughs> and once I yelled it so loud in her ear that she cried and <laughs> it like hurt her oh. eardrum. Uh, but oh there, the other thing with my sister was that I really relished like the older sister role. So there were times I would use it to like, for good, to like do mentorship. And there were other times I'd use it to kind Aww. of torture her a little. So there's one, okay. there's one time, she told me this, that there was one time, and I don't really remember this, but I was doing my math homework in like sixth grade and mm -hmm. it was algebra. And I was like, look, Olivia, there's letters in this math equation. You'll never understand what this is. And she had this thought that was like, oh my God, that's gibberish to me. Like, I oh will God. never understand. <laughs> Just like taunting her. Oh yeah, because I I, th I thought it was oh so cool. It was like, look, there's letters in my math homework, and then she blames me now for the fact that she was kind of bad at math. Oh my god, that oh my god, that's so funny. The reason why I asked um the reason why I asked and I was curious if there was like conflict at all is because I have a cousin, my oldest cousin, who has two daughters, and. Uh, the first one is older by two years than the second, but they're the exact same size and they look exactly the same age. Like the younger one is just very big and the younger one is very aggressive. Like she's a bruiser type. Like she would make a great bouncer one day. Like she's just, she's just, she's just very, she just, she likes to assert her dominance. And the older one is like very sort of timid and just very sweet. And our, it was very sweet. My, my step-grandmother asked her one day, she was like, what do you want to be when you get older? She was like, a hamster. Oh, <laughs> from, it was so classic, sweet. From hamster to bouncer pipeline. Yeah, no, no, no. So the older one wants to be a hamster and the younger one, I think, could make a great bouncer. Oh, I um, see, okay. And the thing is like the younger one, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the thing is like the younger one kind of bullies the older one. And it got to the point where my cousin, their dad, w went up to the older one and was like, hey, you're her big sister. Assert your dominance. I'm allowing you to push back. You can, you can hit her a little bit. Like, it's okay. I want you to defend yourself. And, and she was like, no, I would never do that. And like the other one was just like, yeah, fuck you. Yeah, I'm going to do it. She's like, so yeah, it's a very, it's a very fraught relationship. <laughs> that is, and I feel like I grew up with a lot of stereotypes of, I'm going to try and go in the other room for the, for the good wife. I know that, uh, I think yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Sweet. So I feel like um, I grew up with a lot of, like, notions of, um, oh, you know, like, all sibling relationships are like this or that or the other way. And, yeah. Um, it's just, oh, wait, hold on. Is, is the, um, with the microphone, is the blue icon facing you? What blue icon? No, no, no. So, like the um, the blue logo on your microphone. That I yes, think that's, that's the area of sensitivity. Is this okay? Good. Sorry. Okay. Um, no worries. That is good to check. Um, sorry, this is going to be a lot of editing for you later. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, thank you, by the way, for listeners. If if you're listening and if this part has been edited out yet, uh, the editor of this podcast is Lucas Arnold, and he's amazing. Um, and he's also it's right okay. here on this podcast. <laughs> if you it's can me, if you couldn't tell. No. Um, I was going to ask you, is there anyone, you didn't have siblings, but is there anyone you feel like you had a super adversarial relationship with growing up? Ooh, I mean, like, Charlotte, oh wait, there was a funny thing with- Oh yeah, Charlotte fucking Richard. Charlotte, classic. Fucking Charlotte. No, she, um, she was very, very tall and she was a year older than me. And she, it was sort of this running joke that I always said, you know, one day I'm going to be taller than you. And she's like, no, you're not. You're never going to be taller than me. And so I was just always going, hmm. just, like, hmm. oh. just like trying to like grow more. And now I'm taller it than worked. her. So I was like, suck it. it yeah. I mean, I am taller than her now. You so, are yeah. now six foot seven. I am indeed. I am, I am a towering Nordic giant compared to her. And she's just a wee little hobbit. Um, Does anyone hear the awesome time. siren outside my window? Yeah. 
This is what it's like in New York City, friends. So if you're listening along, you are getting just a little bit of a flavor. Make yourself a bagel. Pretend you're here with us. <laughs> I I muted myself, but um, yep, this is the flavor of New York. Whenever you thought it's about glitz and glamour, it's about sirens and some noise. Yeah. Anyway, oh, so um, do you think we should maybe get to a few submissions? Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, all right, I, uh, I have it open. So let me go. Oh my God, there was one that was like taking up pages. That is huge. Oh my God. I saw that one. I kind of want to read it. I'm so curious. I feel like for the super long ones, I don't want listeners to like zone out halfway through it. I feel like we have to exactly. do like little narration checkpoints where we like check in and yeah. see how we're doing. All right, so I have it up. So should I? Uh, should go I go for it? it? Yeah, let's let's right. get, it, get it rocking. All right, girls. That's how it starts. <laughs> All right, girls. I don't have that interesting story. It's more just hot goss that's in my friend group currently. Awesome. Uh, so I have a best friend. Uh, as one does, and she is the sweetest person ever. I love her with all my heart, don't get me wrong, but she is causing some unnecessary drama. Let's call her Guadalupe. Ethnic, I know! Oh. She's white. Oh, okay. let's let's not call her Guadalupe then. <laughs> that is, it's a nice name, but, the, what? Let's call, you what's know, the let's, whitest name you can think? Kayla, Kayla? Cheryl. Carol. <laughs> Carol. I think Cheryl is a very, I think Cheryl is a very white name. All right, let's call her Cheryl. Imagine her as just like 68 years old. Yeah, Cheryl, she's 68 years old. She has a China collection. And a sourdough crust. starter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Um, okay, anyways, the whole story starts with Cheryl developing a relationship with this guy we can call Buford. Uh, for cuter reference, uh, Buford is the smallest, most petite girl I know. Um, it says Buffard. It says B-U-F-A-R-D. But I like- Oh, yes, John Buffard. Yeah, Buffard, the, the cutest little, little, smallest, most petite girl I know, Buffard. Um, she's like 100 pounds. Okay, she is small. Uh, that will be important later. Long story short, Buffard and Cheryl went on a couple of dates, and then he he ghosted her. Wait, oh, wait I thought it was a girl. Buffard? Holy shit! I thought we have Cheryl and then Buffard, and then you said, yeah, Buffard is the smallest, most petite girl you know. Okay. Wait. The, okay. The guy's name is Buffard. Maybe they're using girl as like a gender neutral. Maybe? I think oh, it might be a typo. Man. It might be like the S was left off of she and it became he. Yeah, but why would he, why would this person say for reference, Buffard is the cutest, most petite girl I know? It's very clear. It's very, very clearly Buffard is a girl. Um, okay, you know, let's just read on. Okay, so um, long story short, Buffard and Cheryl went on a couple of dates and then he ghosted her, okay, because she was really clingy and constantly craved attention from him. Okay, now we're very firmly into a, a man. All right, um, he would respond to her text for 10 minutes and she would freak out and cry like, he doesn't like me anymore. I knew it, I fucking knew it. Uh, feel free to read that in any tone you want. Be creative. Well, he thanks for like your permission. He doesn't like me anymore. I knew it, I fucking knew it. <laughs> he doesn't like me anymore. I knew it, I fucking knew it. He doesn't uh, like me anymore, come on. I knew he it. doesn't like me anymore, I knew it, I fucking knew it. Oh. Okay. okay, um. I hope that was enough tones for you. Uh, okay. Another thing she would do is stalk Buffard's, Buffard X's Instagram and look at pictures of them and then say, she is so much skinnier than me. Ugh, I'm such a fat ass. Ugh. Huh. Oh my God. Okay. Uh, constantly say she is so much fatter than his exes when it was visibly not the case at all. And another girl and I in the friend group have eating disorders. Okay. Um, 
So that did not sit well on the brain train. But we just brushed it off because we figured after Buffard and Cheryl broke up, it would stop. And we are both people pleasers who hate speaking uh, for ourselves. Anyways, with time, Buffard got kind of over it. But even after he stopped talking to Cheryl, she was still obsessed with him. And it's like she was so dependent on a significant other that she didn't know what to do with herself when she was single. Did Buffard write this? <laughs> I'm getting very confused as like who the, who the writer of this is close to, either Buffard or Cheryl. Like it seemed like he was talking about like Buffard as, as that the person they were, but it's clearly Cheryl. Like that's where we've been. But they say, like, Buffard got over it, as if they know Buffard intimately and know what Buffard is going through. So to sum this up for the listeners, uh, so far, let me know if I'm yes. getting it right, Lucas. Okay. Um, Buffard is a guy who is petite, I guess. Um, I guess. Cheryl is the girl who is clingy, and Buffard and Cheryl just broke up. Cheryl mm-hmm. is insecure, makes comments about her weight, and claims that that is why Buffard ended things. This is triggering to the reader and her other indeed I mean, it's her um, other friend who yes. think that who are like, well, we act, we have eating disorders. Maybe you know you don't have one, which I I don't know that that's true. I think this person could also have an eating disorder. I don't. Yes, yeah, very possibly. I, don't I think understand. you have all the details, yeah. But the point is, it's triggering to hear it, but Buffard and Cheryl broke up. Yeah. So the assumption was that this talk of Buffard was going to end in the friend group. Yes, I think so. And it seems to me that Cheryl is just like, a, I don't want to say self-obsessed, but a little self-absorbed and not really detecting how what kind of effect uh, she's having on her friends. Yeah, maybe um, not even self absorbed uh, just kind of being a little solipsist right now, like kind of in her own mm. head and not, not necessarily understanding. But also, yeah. I, don't, I don't think the writer's necessarily being very communicative and being like, hey, when you say this about your weight, it triggers me about my exactly. eating disorder. If you want to talk to me because you also have disordered eating, please do. But um, mm-hmm. if you're just saying this to say it, I kind of wish you wouldn't because it's a little bit triggering for me. Indeed. Um, yeah. But maybe okay. there's a wrinkle in this story that we don't know. <laughs> exactly. I have a feeling. I have a, I, have a, I have a good feeling about that. Okay, so. It's like 30 more pages. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. But even after he stopped talking to Cheryl, she was still obsessed with him. And it's like she was so dependent on a significant other that she didn't know what to do with herself when she was single. Her happiness was dependent on a significant other. I told her that she should try to work on herself because she is an amazing human being and that the most perfect and the most perfect person ever. And if he can't see that, whatever, he's a dirty slut anyways. I appreciate that use of that word with him. Mm. Anyway, so she agreed, but didn't change anything. Then after not even a month of her breaking up with Buffard, she got into another relationship with another guy we can call Chernobyl. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, I we think can I know call him Chernobyl. I- I think we've detected the the name generation uh, formula that she's got. I think she's just spun a globe and pointed on a map like, let's name her, let's name this person uh, Milan. This person will be Milan now. And what do we have over here? Oh, yeah, we're going to call this Wellington, New Zealand. Wellington, New Zealand is and the new... And then she hooked up with the 9-11, and that was so <laughs> The 9-11 memorial. <laughs> That's his last name, Memorial. (laughs) Oh my god. Okay, with another guy we can call Chernobyl. Chernobyl, we all kind of knew because he was introduced to us, but we weren't rude or did or did besties or anything. Honestly, nobody was really a fan of his except Cheryl. Mm, But we but we thought, whatever, just because we aren't a fan of his doesn't mean Cheryl can't date him. He's a nice guy, it's fine. And that's true. He is a nice guy, but his sense of humor, how do I put this in the nicest way? He didn't have one. (laughs) Okay. He had no sense of humor, so he didn't really fit in with the group. 
But whatever, we thought, how bad can it be? As long as Cheryl is happy, that's all that matters. Guess what? It got bad. Mm. The first red flag was when we hung out with Chernobyl and Cheryl together. One instance was, it was Cheryl, Chernobyl, and I. Uh, for the record, the correct uh, usage is me. If you're, if you're referring to yourself as an object and not as a subject, I'm just putting that out there. Um, Thank you. To anyone, yes. Um, so... Okay, one instance, it was Cheryl, Chernobyl, and me hanging out, uh, chilling or whatever, and Chernobyl and Cheryl were so touchy and gross with each other to the point where it makes people uncomfortable. What is your opinion on PDA? I just want to ask you. I love PDA. What the fuck ever? But I will say, when you're single, seeing other people do PDA is the worst thing in the world. But also, when, yeah. I, when I was single, I hated Valentine's Day. Now I love Valentine's Day. You know why? Because I have no yeah. But Honestly... When I was single, I was totally fine with Valentine's Day. I real it never bothered me. I was like, I'm so glad there's a day that you just focus on your significant other and like appreciate them in a way that I think couples might not might not often do. I was always appreciative of it. Oh, I hated it. I was like, oh, these fucking people rubbing it in my face, like, and I guess that's how I felt about PDA too when I was single. Yeah, just honestly. Don't give Generally, I think <laughs> as long as I'm able to avoid it, if I'm if it's in like a public place, like let's say people are like making out at a park, you can just turn yourself away from that and not have that enter your senses. So as long as it's uh, easy to avoid, I say let live and let live. I think. But, when um, oh, I think when you're in love, PDA is very sweet, and I think, yeah. I think when you're not in love, it's very sad. Yeah. But I'm a very touchy. I like to. I like to have human touch um yeah yeah physical so. yeah physical touch i'm also a big fan of physical touch as like a love language yeah same so i think i'm a big pda person for that reason if i were to comment yeah. i hate pda people would be like well you pda from me and i'd be like yeah exactly i'm in love so whatever but i can also understand if i don't know the context of uh, cheryl and chernobyl's relationship mm -hmm. but what, I do love that their fake names somehow match, but I will say... Yeah. Well, that's because we just came up with a white name. By the way, Cheryl, in every time it says Guadalupe, I say Cheryl. Just to, <laughs> just to remind people that in, in the submission, uh, it said Guadalupe, and we just changed it to Cheryl because we were like, that's, that's a... If she was Hispanic, I would have kept it as Guadalupe, or if that was... Yeah. Like her real she name. might be Hispanic. We don't know that she isn't. No, it says she's white. All the white people. Oh, it did. You're right. I mean, yeah. that's not mutually exclusive, but yeah, yeah, yeah. white people. Can it be didn't. Se it didn't yeah. sound like it was a Hispanic. Anyway. Yeah. Um. All right. Let's continue. So, um. All right. One instance. Um. Oh yeah. So, uh, physical touch, gross. Uh, gross with each other to the point where it makes people uncomfortable. They would whisper to each other. They would be constantly cuddling. But the icing on the cake was when Cheryl went home and we walked out to his car. Cheryl we were all talk went home. Um, yes. It's confusing. Yeah, so Chernobyl went home and we walked out to his car. Maybe they're walking him to his car to say goodbye. Okay, anyway. Walked out to his car. We were all talking by his car until Chernobyl gave me a look that was like, bitch, leave us alone. I want to get some good pussy here right now type of look. What kind of look is that? Wait, oh wait. Gabby, so just try to give me that look right now and I'll try to describe it for our listeners. Okay, hold on. <laughs> for those who are just listening on a podcast app, you just basically gave me blue steel. <laughs> Leave me alone. I'm trying to get some good... Leave me alone. I'm just... It's, I'm just trying to do my best here. Try to get some good pussy, all right? Bro, like, leave me alone. Like, I'm trying to get the good pussy. Come on. <laughs> I, do, I don't think, I don't think there's a look that describes that. I do, uh, there is an interesting thing of when, like, uh, you see two people who are in a relationship, you're, like, hanging out with a couple, mm -hmm. and you don't know the other person in the couple very well. And... Yeah you can tell that the other person in the couple is like waiting for you as the friends to leave so they can have sex. Mm. And that really bothers me. Cause I'm like, okay, but we're this person's friends. Like, yeah, just I was really bad at that. I was not that good at picking up cute, especially when I was in high school. So I was the one that just like hung around too long, totally oblivious oh. to like what was wanted of me. Like Lucas, get the fuck out. I was, yeah. 
But I don't I remember because you can have sex any time of day or night. Like you can't always coordinate with your friends to hang out. I remember I had a friend in high school who told me that her friends who were a couple, they were all sleeping over in one room together and she could hear them having sex like three feet away from them while she was in the room, like sleeping, but she was like wide awake. She was just going, oh my God. Well, that's how I lost my virginity. I was in a summer camp bunk and uh, my then uh, partner, were, we were having sex and I we were like, oh, surely the roommates can't hear, but they obviously- Oh my God. When you're 16, you don't know, come on. You just yeah. have this illusion of like, well, maybe if I want to do this badly enough, <laughs> it'll just go my way and nothing yeah. will happen. Did I tell you about what it was like for me losing my virginity? No, we haven't gotten there yet, which I, I do want to hear from you. Yeah, sure. No, okay, so it was um, it was a girlfriend and I had... Okay, when I say losing my virginity... Okay, let me just explain it. Because it gets a little bit weird. So it was my first girlfriend. It was our one-year anniversary. And I had made, like, dinner for us because I, oh. I... And, like, I made, like, steak with... I made like steak with roast potatoes and salad. And then I made chocolate lava cake with ice cream for dessert. And what was funny is that my mom went out to buy the steak from a butcher and she was just so proud that I was cooking for my girlfriend. Like she was just like, I'm so glad you're doing this. I was like, yeah, I'm trying to get laid. Stop. I don't want to think about you in association with this as much. Um, And then like we were eating and and my girlfriend looks at me. She was like, you want to have sex today, don't you? I was like, yes. And she was like, all right. I was like, yeah. And so we went into my room afterwards. And we, we gave some time to digest. And like. And I hope there was kissing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, there was kissing. There was foreplay. There was everything. And then like very carefully, sorry, um, got out a condom. I put it on and very carefully I started to like insert my dick. And just when I barely got like the head in, she was like stop and I jumped back I was like oh my god are you okay and she was like it was uh, it was very painful it just it wasn't right try again and I was like okay and so I started to insert it and it just got very about like halfway in and then I went all the way in and the moment I got sort of right up to the base essentially she pushed me out really really forcefully and then yelped in pain and shuffled to the foot of my bed and was just like crying hysterically from like an intense pain and the thing is like I remember I was looking down at my dick which was like still erect and it looked confused your dick looked confused that means it it has a curve probably because it was from question mark (laughs) yeah maybe (laughs) but it just it just like it was just like what what the fuck what and then I like and then I shuffled to the foot of the bed as well. And I just put my arms around. Her. I was like, it's okay. We can try again another time. And later on that day, we sort of, she was like, do you want to try again? And I was like, let me just try with a finger or two. And I like put them inside and she was like, and I was like, maybe we shouldn't use another, waste another condom yet. Let's build up. And sure. we broke and we broke up like a month later. Oh, that's a bummer. So yeah, I don't know if you would call it like losing my, it would be like, would you call it playing tennis if you just hit a ball with a racket and then you, and then it got volleyed back and then that was it. And then the would you call that playing tennis? Confused, like an erect penis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like, I, like, I did the physical thing of the thing going in the other and like, so the mechanics were completed, but like, I didn't get a good volley in. You know, I see. Well, then, I mean, it all depends definitionally to you. I feel like if you feel like you're lost, yeah, because virginity is also a concept. There's, there's people oh, totally who think getting like a hand job or a blow job can be a form of sex. Yeah, in your virginity, everyone yeah. but Bill Clinton feels this way. Right. <laughs> but yeah, and then it wasn't. It was not until I was 19 that I had sex again, and then it was proper good sex that I, that we finished. Oh, and great. everything and that was nice that was nice oh but i hope that girl is doing well and it, it sounds like you were very respectful in the situation and everyone was good with i you. tried to be she was not a. I believe that person is now a they i believe okay. yeah but um they were not a kind individual they were very emotionally abusive oh I'm um, so- to me throughout the relationship 
more so more so towards the end and uh yeah i'm not a big fan yeah well, it was inter- it was kind of the it was an interesting thing it was um because like she had they had kind of the same effect on a lot of our people in our circle of friends and so a lot of people like were on my side they're just like yeah lucas we know what you went through it was much more intense for, like we felt the same thing recognized that it was more t- intense for you though so it was nice that i was like validated in terms of my experience that is, that is really nice. Yeah. And I think that that's the fear of that not happening is maybe why I've never yeah. ended up like dating someone in my friend group. Because every, that's good. every time I've had a breakup with someone, I've been able to just like, um, like, you know, separate from their friends. I think maybe that's attributed to the fact that like Sylvie's the first person I've dated where I actually like her friends. Um, my, that's, my ex definitely I didn't mind her friends they were just basic I could do with or without yeah. them and my high school ex had like the worst meanest n- cruel New Jersey friends like ever oh my god oh my god no but the thing is like my girlfriend now it was one of my I knew I was interested in her like super quickly and a big sign for me is I think is this someone I would feel proud and comfortable introducing to my friends and my family is that is this someone I would feel comfortable doing that? And immediately I felt that with her. I was like, oh yeah, she's a she's a solid human that I would like very proudly like bring. And the thing that really set thing like fireworks off in my mind is that I went to the beach and I met a couple of her friends. And these are people, one, it's I would say this is a very good dating advice for anyone, is if you're considering someone for a relationship, make sure that they have long friendships that they have sustained yes that's true that is a very very important sign and so my girlfriend she has like friends that she's had for over a decade they're very very close and but i went to meet them at the beach and i really liked them they were so easy to hang out with it was so it was such a breeze and i thought this is a good and rare sign you need to hold on to this at least it's like yeah i was it was just a great sign for me yeah for sure you have to it's all about the, it's a lot about the company you keep. I really feel totally. sometimes like I'm barely an adult because half of the things that I decide on or the little like ways that I comport myself through my life, I am sometimes not even trusting my own decisions. It's like, if I'll do something and a friend doesn't approve of it, I think to myself, like, what am I doing? And it's not because I'm a simp who's being told around by everyone. I just trust the people in my life to lead me the yeah. right way. Like my best friend, we've been best friends for, God, I don't know how long. Like I think since freshman year of college, which was what thirty years ago. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a it was a long time ago, but we were kind of the best friends who became best friends right away. And I That's just awesome. I just trust her judgment on everything, and I just trust my family's judgment on everything, and. It's yeah. the kind of thing where when someone's looking out for you in the right way, you just kind of know. And if someone has bad interests at heart, maybe you give them the benefit of the doubt. But at the end of the day, it yeah. always it always comes it always comes out and always comes to light. And I think totally. it's true what you said that it's it's good to be avoidant of people who have like these very short burst friendships or people who don't yes. know. Oh, I didn't talk to anyone in college or high school or like that's fine but there's always going to be like two or three like-minded individuals everywhere you go at least yeah not more it was also that became a, keeping good company having uh long relationships with good friends that became a priority after i met someone last year who i went on only just like a couple of dates with but something she told me that was just an immediate red flag she was like yeah, a lot of my, I don't really speak to a lot of my friends anymore. They block me and I have on social media and I have no idea why. And I was just like, hmm. The I have no idea why card is always so funny. Exactly. Because like you the can't tell what the common denominator is. Yeah, no, it's like, oh, I don't know why this person must love drama so much. And then it's just like, uh, nope, they are actually really mean. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. But should we? Should we finally finish this? Video? Yes, I was about to say. Okay, so the icing was uh, on the cake when Chernobyl went home and we walked out to his car. Okay, uh, gave me a look uh, that was like, bitch, leave us alone. I want to get some good pussy here, right here, right now type of look. And that was probably the most uncomfortable state I've been in to this day. 
I walked to my car and who knows that they did in his car. Who knows what they did in his car, but I was literally forced to sit in my car for like 15 minutes while they barebacked in his car. Ooh. <laughs> use a condom, everyone. Uh, use protection. Uh, just a, always a good advice if uh, when in doubt. Okay. I talk about all this with another girl in our friend group who we will call Peepaw, since we both have the same opinion about Chernobyl. Wait, Peepaw what? <laughs> I'll call her Peepa so... since we both feel the same way about this one specific subject. Um, do, does the writer and her Peepa both feel a certain way about Russia? And like, is, I'm trying to like find the derivative. Oh my God. Okay. Peepa, why not? Hmm. Okay. Uh, Peepa and I talked about this situation and were both flabbergasted. She also told me about a bunch of other similar situations that she had with Cheryl and Chernobyl that were almost the exact same as the experience I had. One thing after another, the same thing would happen every, every time any of us hung out with the two of them in the group together. It made us all so uncomfortable. They hung out almost every day by themselves. Can't they save the icky shit for then? I don't know if it's just, I don't know if it's just me, but I think that's reasonable. The last instance that happened before the big confrontation was when Chernobyl, Cheryl, another guy who we will call Meek Meek, and I. <laughs> this is some Pokemon <laughs> anime shit that this person's writing. <laughs> Fucking out of pocket names. Or like Roadrunner. Little, little, meep, meep. Meep, meep. You know? it's good. Next, it's going to be like my dad. Let's call him psoriasis. <laughs> Moderate to severe flex psoriasis. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Um, uh, and another guy who we will call Meep Meep and I went out to lunch. The whole time, it was the same stuff. They were very touchy and whispering to themselves, cuddling in the booth. Even Meep Meep said he was super uncomfortable. But the big thing was when Meep Meep went home and Chernobyl and Cheryl were sitting in the back of my car as I was in the front and they full blowing made and they full blowing made out in the back of my car like full on tonsil hockey as I sat there like, uh, okay. And also Cheryl was in a relationship with Chernobyl she would still go on about how fat she is and how she had to work out all the damn time and how she ate so much today and feels so fat. And she would say that stuff for attention so that Chernobyl would be like, OMG, no baby girl, don't say that, you're perfect. She wasn't fat, she knew she wasn't fat. Okay, no, she didn't, I'm gonna interrupt. She doesn't, no one knows, there is so much impetus put on weight in our culture. Yeah. A person could be like a hundred pounds soaking wet and still have the dysmorphia of believing they're fat. Like, yeah. I, I think from this, Cheryl has body image issues. And I think this reader, if you're listening, I hope you take mm -hmm. this a kind way, but I think you may be falling into a trap that I fell into a lot in middle school of being like, this person looks like this. So the narrative must be that they're faking this for attention because why else would they be doing it? They have the perfect body and they must know it. But the truth is they don't know. And they mm -hmm. Cheryl is clearly insecure, clearly genuinely believes herself to not look as, you know, fantastic as you seem to think she does. Um, and people do fish for compliments when they're insecure. Yeah. You could be a model and you still don't know there's a lot of people who, you know, are 300 pounds and think they're beautiful and probably are very beautiful because weight doesn't yeah. have anything to do with beauty necessarily. Um, yeah. It has a lot to do with societal beauty and body image, especially in middle school and high school, which is the age I would assume this reader is at. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, well, the thing is like, well, this, the person who write this, they're driving cars. Oh, yeah, you're right. So it couldn't be middle school. It has to be high school. At least, yeah. At I would least, say at least yeah. high school. Um, okay, so let's go on. So, oh, do you know, baby girl, don't say that. Okay, she wasn't fat. She knew she wasn't fat. And that made Peepaw and I kind of upset 
because of our issues that I mentioned before. So I told Peepaw about two and the situation and her, and I were like, okay, we should confront her about it in the nicest way. The whole reason we didn't confront her sooner is because Cheryl is very sensitive and would cry over a lot of things. So we were very hesitant to say anything in fear of making her upset or sad because we valued her happiness over ours, which is really sad now that I think about it. Yeah, this is an, this is an important th a moment to make a PSA. Um, you, can't give any, you can't give any energy to your friends if you are expelled of energy yourself. You need to take care of yourself first before you can take care of other people. Absolutely. And you should love yourself before you should love other people. That's a very important thing. And, uh, okay. Um, okay. Um, okay. Uh, upset or sad because we valued her happiness over ours, which is really sad now that I think about it. But we were both like, we don't want to keep falling back into old unhealthy habits and die. So we should say something. So we did. We tried to tell her that in the nicest way possible that it made us uncomfortable when she was so touchy with Chernobyl and it was really negatively affecting us when she said all those things about her being fat and needing to diet and work out and the, and the time. I do like the healthy communication. That is nice. This is good. This sounds awesome. Uh, applauding you very much. Okay. Uh, and I personally decided to take a break from her, but that was completely on me so I could get my shit worked out and not be so sensitive to that kind of talk. I felt really bad about this. Like, why am I being such a little bitch about this? It's just words. I shouldn't be so sensitive and gross. Like, she shouldn't have to walk on eggshells around me. That's annoying and embarrassing on my part. I think you, I think as long as you're not blaming her and you're just saying, and you're just saying, hey, I need to take some time for mm -hmm. myself. This is what I need to do for me. Um, I think that's totally, as yeah, as long as like, you're identifying it as you are suffering because of your own sensibilities, but you are also going to do what you can to fix that. You're not putting any responsibility on anyone else to fix your problems. That is a very responsible and mature way to talk about it. Yeah, I completely agree. Not to mention that my, my therapist always says like when the word should enters the picture, it's a bad mm. thing, which is to say like, maybe we all should be anything like maybe i should be working three jobs but i'm just like i'm not because i a, can't find what i'm gonna be i just like don't i wouldn't have the bandwidth regardless um yeah you physically spiritually um anytime you say you should do something just you know it's the exactly. kind of thing to be careful of because it's like that's a judgment on yourself mm -hmm. okay Okay, uh, embarrassing on my part, but I knew that if I didn't take this break, then I would just fall back into old habits, and that wouldn't be a good thing at all. I guess I realized that my well-being is also kind of important, and I should start to put myself first so I don't end up worsening for other people's sake. Amazing. 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 Uh, I don't know if I'm being dramatic, but anyways, after we confronted Cheryl, she freaked out and got all upset, which is the entire reason why we wanted so long to do it. Where we, uh, which is the entire reason why we waited so long to do it. I think that person meant to say. Um, she got mad that Peepaw and I talked behind her back instead of talking to her directly. But the whole reason was because she would have gotten all upset and she did exactly that. But here's the kicker. After confronting Cheryl, Chernobyl texted me asking me about it. So connecting the dots, Cheryl spilled all of our personal information to Chernobyl, which she got mad at us for talking about. Uh, which she got mad at us for talking behind her back. I got kind of mad about that, but I didn't say anything because I didn't want to be a complete bitch. But anyways, there's a lot of but anyways. You could just yeah. end the sentence. That's true. It's the it's the very female, I feel like, need to modify everything. It's mm. the like, oh, I don't know if I mean what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, adding qualifiers like and like, yeah. Precisely. Yeah, okay. Uh, but anyways, Chernobyl was basically like, uh, Cheryl is worried that you hate her. And I made it clear that I would never hate her in a million years. She is my best friend that I love her with all of my heart and would literally die for her. She could run over my dog and I'd be like, eh, dog food is expensive anyways. Want to go bowling? <sighs> That's a solid friend relationship. That's but, um shockwaves of joy through my heart. Aw. <laughs> okay. After that, pretty recently, uh, Cheryl's parents found out about her and Guadalupe. Uh, okay. Keep Cher, saying Noble, Cher Noble's parents found out about him. Yes. And Cheryl. Okay. 
relationship. Okay, Chernobyl's parents found out about his and Cheryl's relationship and took his phone and blocked all of us. These are kids. These are, I think it's high school. If they're driving, but their parents can take away their phone, this yeah, is squarely high in high school. No doubt in my mind. Okay. Uh, and blocked all of us. He told Cheryl that they couldn't talk ever again, but that but that turned into emailing back and forth now. So I think they're still together. They just can't hang out, which is kind of weird since Chernobyl is 18, but whatever. And Cheryl is a mess right now. She cries all the time over this man and posts about it on social media, which is kind of annoying, but she doesn't talk to me about it, which in retrospect, I'm kind of glad she doesn't because I'm kind of glad she doesn't because I don't want to hear about Chernobyl every five seconds. Long story short, we are good now, but I'm still taking a break to work on my shit, and she's taking a break to work on her shit. This story isn't interesting, but it's something that felt so good to get off my chest. Oh my god! It's in all caps. I had to do that. So good to get off my chest. Oh my god. I swear to god I'm not a bitch, I swear. Well, that's it, ladies. Have a great day. You know, you're not a bitch. I, I agree with I you. I don't think so either. Um, the worst part, the villain of the story is Chernobyl's parents. That's a curveball at the yeah. end. Chernobyl Sr. and <laughs> Mrs. Chernobyl. Oh my god. Oh, what a marathon that was. <laughs> um, shall I read another one? <laughs> yeah, let's, yeah, let's do another one. Go ahead. Um, okay, let me find a good one. Uh, I just, I, Peepaw and Meep Meep, where did those names come from? I still think Chernobyl is my favorite one. When she was like, I don't want to hear about Chernobyl every five seconds. I was like, why do you think I didn't watch the miniseries? Am I right? <laughs> uh, let me see. Okay. Um, okay. So this has been a buildup over the last two years, and thankfully it's done now. These are all fake names already, so for clarity, A is my fiancé, B is my ex-partner, and my fiancé's best friend to this day. Uh, C is my fiancé's ex-girlfriend. And D This is confusing already. <laughs> yeah, maybe they should have added this at the, the letters at the end. D was the guy I was hooking up with before my current... I'm sure we'll get the contact. Contact the Celastic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let's let's dive right in. So this all started when I was 20. My mom's kind of terrible and started spreading rumors to people who knew me that I was getting down and dirty with anyone who would want to. Well, that's fucked up. I hadn't even gotten a proper makeout session at that point. So shitty as fuck, but whatever. Um, it wore on for me for about three months, and I met this guy, B. Um, I'm expecting a roast. He's 44, almost 46 now. So Wait, how old is the writer? The writer was 20 when this was written. Okay. So this man was okay. very much older. Um, yeah. He was obviously smooth as fuck, and after a couple months of talking, we hooked up. No big deal. It was a friends with benefits situation. He had a girl like two hours away that knew about me. We even talked. During all of this, B was still emotional about his ex-wife, who... Um, had slept because he cheated on left because he cheated on her i think that's mm -hmm. what um unless she just took a really long nap because he cheated on her he was still holding out hope so when she reached out to b he dropped me like a hot potato again no big deal but that's also how i met c so c is her fiance's ex-girlfriend um okay Okay, so this girl has a current fiance. That's what I'm starting to understand. That's how I met okay. C. She was all right, kind of backhanded, but what do you do? Exactly a month after meeting C, A came into my life. He was dating C at the time. Um, but they were apparently poly, so A and I started flirting and everything, much to the chagrin of B, even though she and B had broken up. Fast forward a little bit, C wanted to leave because she felt like I was getting more of A's attention. So, and she did, only to date my uncle! <laughs> what? Oh my god. Where the fuck did the uncle get in? What? Oh my god. Weird, but another poly situation, so no big deal. Is this the incest thing from last week? Oh my Is god. Is this like... 
Oh my god. No, but this is what plays in my mind every time someone's like, I'm polyamorous. I'm like, good for you. But in my head, it's like, if there's more than two people, it's this level of complicated to me. This, I'm so lost already. I'm really, really lost. I was, I was really, because the last one was so long. I was like, oh no, I just want, I just want, I just want someone to say they have a phobia of couch foam or something. I just want to. I want something simple. Now the issue comes that she, I think referring to C, who is the um, ex-girlfriend of A, who this reader was also dating. Now the issue comes that she is an STD and never told anyone about it. So (gasps) A, B, and me all got this incurable STD from C, and she thinks we keep talking about her, and she's dating my uncle. Joke's on her because I got a WAP and a ring. Well, you you probably had a WAP before, but congrats on the ring. Say it loud, say it proud. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> is this bitch an LMFAO? Because LMFAO, like, that whole thing is like, it's like a guy and his uncle. <laughs> yes, that's true. And they're well, both like a, a child involved? and grandchild of Barry Gordy, yeah. I can't imagine oh. if Sylvie dated my uncle, I'd be so mad. I couldn't imagine someone. Oh my God. Oh, Jesus. Oh. This is not a good story for poly people or people who want to be in a poly relationship. No, this poly is not. People can be wonderful. It's just this is what oh, I. Absolutely. Just as long as you be safe and communicative, then you can. And consensual that you can and do Don't have you want. incurable STDs and don't yeah. date people's uncles. <laughs> oh my god. This is oh this is oh this is a train wreck of oh. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna look for a short I'm one, look, a short Yeah. Brief. <laughs> I'm gonna look for a brief one. Um I really like the super brief ones that are literally like Hey, or like I followed you. I'm yeah, like, it's mostly <laughs> you. I'm under no illusion that these people want me. Uh, oh wait, I think I have one. This is interesting. Yes, not please. a phobia, but a friend. They are paranoid as hell of ambidextrous people. Ooh. <laughs> that is, that's an interesting fear. It is someone who has like be. just a skill to write with both hands, like. Well, what do you need more than one fucking hand for? Jim Abbott my dad's a hitter with one. Yeah. Oh, your dad is. No, it was interesting. I was about to say, well, my dad's, um, he's like more left-handed, but he can use both hands to write. But then I thought he's a very sus person though. He is, we have some issues. So I thought that's not a good example. <laughs> this might be just a well-founded, because the thing is like a phobia has to be an irrational fear. So this just might be a totally rational fear that everyone should have. But ambidextrous people, I don't think ambidextrous people have ever hurt anyone. Like, I've never heard of, like, the ambidextrous murderer. Yeah. Murdered with it's... two guns in both hands. With perfect aim. <laughs> Just... <laughs> have you seen those, like, uh, pictures where, like, someone is, like, um, they don't take the pen off the paper at all, and they use both hands to draw, like, each side of a portrait? No. And they I do haven't. it at the same time using both hands and to do a portrait of someone. I've never heard of that. It's really cool. <laughs> That's dope, actually. Yeah, yeah, there's nothing to be scared of, but the thing about phobias is you're right. You can never convince people that there's actually nothing yeah. to be scared of. Here's another one, though. My weirdest phobia is being scared of the feeling or texture of cotton balls. Mm, yeah, I understand. Do you know what's weird? I kind of get it, because like, if you squeeze them, they have a weird sort of crunchy texture. You can... It's sort. It's weird. You can you can hear the fibers like colliding. This podcast. And I don't enjoy it. I don't. <laughs> yeah. We should do some ASMR. Oh yeah. Just a... The cotton balls are on your your hands. Balls. Squish them. Squish, squish the balls. Squish the balls. <laughs> squish the balls. <laughs> Oh, wait, I forgot to read this one the other the other day. But I really oh, please go ahead. Okay. Uh, TLDR, I convinced my boyfriend our printer was speaking to us and spying on us. 
My boyfriend oh my recently brought a new printer and set it up. We don't use it often, but one day I had the great idea that I would convince him our printer was one, spying on us, and two, communicating with us via printout. I wanted the printer to grab his attention, so I printed 10 pages that only had the words remote error printed. I called him to the printer and told him there must be something wrong with it. So he starts fiddling with settings, and I immediately print another letter and sign it cordially printer at the end. I would write these <laughs> nonsensical messages and always sign it sincerely printer. Anyways, then I started asking him if it was possible for a printer to record audio, hinting that it could be listening to us. I would tailor the messages oh being God. printed to resemble conversations we had. So at this point, he was thinking our printer was hacked and recording us. He never suspected it was me and was genuinely convinced our printer was hacked. He unplugged the printer and was Googling oh. how printers can be hacked. When I finally told him, he was very confused, but also happy that our printer wasn't hacked. He just has a very mean girlfriend. Oh, I like this story. That's really sweet. You do have a slightly dumb boyfriend, but he sounds like a gem. This is some shit I would fall for. I kind of fell for this the other day at Ann. Oh, yeah? Uh, <laughs> because our friend, Nick Cohen, uh, who I do two-person shows with, he signed up for the mic one week as the name Hugh, like H-U-G-H, last name J A S S O L. So huge, huge a soul, aka huge <laughs> asshole. <laughs> but I didn't cat. I was just like, please welcome huge a soul because I thought it was like a foreign name or something. <laughs> and then, you know, he tells me, oh, that was me. I like signed up to prank you so that you'd say huge asshole. It didn't work, whatever. Second week, <laughs> though, yesterday, there was a new sign up from a person named. <laughs> Eileen Dover. Eileen Dover. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but when Nick signed up, he was more <laughs> thorough with this. He wrote Eileen mm -hmm. Dover. He put in the Instagram account of a random person named Eileen. And <laughs> put in a fake email that was like Eileen Dover at 457gmail.com. And then also wrote that Eileen uses they, them pronouns. So Aaron and I were oh like frantically God. texting each other. Like, oh, there's a new person here. Like we got to, you know, uh, oh no. Oh, when is... And then Eileen was late. We were like, oh no, Eileen hasn't logged on yet. Like uh, we'll, we'll add them to the end of the list. And then we, you know how he and I will Instagram message people like, hey, can you make it to Anne still if they sign yeah, up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We messaged the Instagram account that Nick <laughs> linked, not realizing it was just a random person named Eileen. <laughs> oh, I love an elaborate prank. I love that so much. <laughs> that reminds me of this. That's, oh, that's beautiful. It's so childish, though. That is a, that is a beautifully childish prank. All to make me say Eileen <laughs> I love that it caused so much hassle for you. <laughs> also, this reminds me of a story. I don't know if you know about this. Are you, were you a fan of like Monty Python growing up? Yes, I was. So Michael Palin, he was flipping through like a gardening magazine one day and he came across this woman whose name is Gwen Dibley. And he got very just fascinated by her name. He just really liked the lyrical quality of it, just Gwen Dibley. And, he, and it was when they were coming up with the name for the show. And he thought, wouldn't it be great to give someone a show without telling them? And so he, he genuinely tried to make the name of the show Gwen Dibley's Flying Circus. Oh, yeah. Just so that her son or something would turn on the TV one and go, go Mom, you got a series on television. Just like. And she'd be like, what the fuck? It's just, I love that. <laughs> Wait, there's a question now from the audience. Ooh, let's do it. Who, who would win in a fight, a silverback mm. or a grizzly? What is a silverback? A silverback gorilla? I think that's what they're referring to. Mm. Not silverback it. development, as I just Googled. <laughs> that is really, that's a really tough one, because I would imagine they would, simil they would have similar strengths. Do you know what I think it might be? Hmm. I think it might be the gorilla because I think the gorilla has longer arms and a lower center of gravity. Hmm. 
I think they shouldn't fight. I think they should just learn <laughs> to love each other. <laughs> just use your words and communicate openly. Don't there hold anything back. It's common ground. You, I understand that I'll never understand, but still I stand, you know? <laughs> Oh my god. Should we do uh one more and then uh and then say goodbye to yeah. our to our listeners and viewers? All right, let's do let's do it. One more. Okay, let me let me see if I can Okay. Um Oh, this is a friend of ours who submitted. Um Phobia One, dear. Saw security footage of a deer eating raw beef as a preteen. <laughs> deer was eating raw beef? I think, yeah. Our friend, as a preteen, saw footage of a deer eating raw beef. Well, humans eat raw beef. That's okay. It's okay, but I, I think it would be like, I, I would imagine that deer are herbivores. So I think that that would oh. be just startling. So it was like a fucked Let's up see. deer. It was like a deer who with it was like yeah, the this is... Dahmer of deer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Terrible. And this is a childhood phobia. The house is full of methane gas and everyone is dead except me, but I can't wake everyone up to check because that would be rude. <laughs> oh yeah, I know who wrote this. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Nessa Hunt, if you're listening, <gasps> please wake everyone up. <laughs> They're not. Yeah, please. This is the time to be rude. This is the time not to care about manners. Methane <laughs> gas supersedes um, protocol. Just Imagine someone saves your life and you're like, but they were so rude while doing it. It was really. Yeah. <laughs> but they grab. But they. Yeah, the firefighter when they pulled me out of the burning building, they touched me, they like, they grabbed my ass as they were like, as they were pulling me out. Yeah, because it's a good place to like, get a good low center of gravity and pull you out. Just be happy you're alive. Who doesn't want a firefighter grabbing their ass? Am I right? Yeah. Not a cop. Yeah, it's like a good place to like, lift from the, it's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my girlfriend just came to like, eye me from the other room. <laughs> Just like, mm, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure she has a firefighter fantasy too. It's okay. Everyone dreams of of competence and just like no, people yeah. around them who just know what to do. Like that's just hot. For what it's worth, I would hope that anyone and everyone I'm living with, if there was a real danger of methane gas leak, that they would wake me up in the middle of the night. I'm just putting that out here and I'm putting it out there. I don't care who knows it. That'd be so rude, I don't, Lucas. I don't care if I lose friends over it. I just need to speak my mind. Uh, well, on that note. On that note, this has been episode three of two nosy meerkats with gabby jordan brown and lucas arnold and we will see you next time <laughs>